My name is Rachel Victoria White. And my name is Dr. John Stewart. And I'm a scientist and I do work in medical electronics and biophysics. And it's related to my interest in the earlier technologies. What appeals to me about steampunk personally um, is the fact that it really does strike a chord within me as I've always had a keen interest since early childhood as far back as I can recall in the Victorian and Edwardian eras. And Steampunk is perhaps one of the most innovative and creative uh, incarnations of, of a reinterest in the Victorian era. And I'm, I quite uh, resonated with the creativity of it and the innovation, the uniqueness, the do-it-yourself DIY element. And it's a, a matter of, of reflecting on the old tinkering from the late 19th and early 20th centuries primarily. Oh, everything has become digitalized now and aesthetically speaking not nearly as attractive or as well made it could be argued. This fridge is one of the very first electric fridges right after the ice box. Uh, this was the latest innovation. It's a GE monitor top refrigerator. It is electric and uh, we've restored it uh, we've rewired it for safety reasons and I've done res some restorative cleaning and painting on it and it functions very well and it does not use Freon I might add. It's lined here with wood and uh, has a little mini freezer and it only needs to be defrosted maybe every once in a half, uh, once every month and a half so it, it's not too high maintenance. It works enormously well. It's the best fridge I've ever owned truly. Well, what I set out to do um, and I established this organization the Hamilton Steampunk and Victorian Society back in the summer of 2009. Um, what I do with it I seek various historically themed events, steampunk and non-steampunk alike, and I post them on our website, I email them to people on our mailing list, post it on Facebook, I'm getting more involved with Twitter gradually, and also on meetup.com. Well, the definite beauty of, of Hamilton and its correlation with steampunk is the fact that Hamilton is a city that has um, re retained much of its history. That feel of a, a truly industrial, uh, true to its roots type of city. Well, I have a familial connection to Hamilton, as it turns out already, and that is through my paternal grandfather. His name was Carl Borgström. He emigrated from Sweden in the early 20th century, and he went on to enter a contest <clears throat> as a landscape architect uh, in 1929, and that was to change the entranceway into Hamilton. And so he won that contest and he commenced the whole project to um, start the building of the Royal Botanical Gardens in Hamilton to improve the appearance and uh, aesthetic appeal. Well, in 2011 for our society, um, I, I should backtrack a little and explain that this year we had planned a steamposium and uh, the theme was full steam ahead. And so was my motivation and drive with it. Um, unfortunately, the ticket sales were just not adequate to break even. I'm sorry to say here and reflect on something negative like that. Um, it would be nice to have a crack at that again, but it's going to take more dedication and devotion from other individuals, not just myself, because I was essentially a one-woman band in that regard, and it was just too much for one person. Well, certainly there's a far greater interest in it in the U.S. Um, simply by virtue of the fact you're dealing with a much larger population base. There's a 10 to 1 ratio. And also, Americans are far more interested and passionate about their history than Canadians are, unfortunately. Um, so just by those aspects alone, there is quite a, a chasm, the difference between the interest in steampunk there, our neighbours to the south, and here in Canada. Um, I certainly hope that the momentum will continue to grow as the interest in steampunk literature and films continues to grow. And that will reach Canada as well to the same extent. Well, I have a special interest in art uh, as related to technology. I think uh, the two uh, combine very creatively together 
and uh, I'm interested in the ki kind of technological jewelry uh, that people can wear, uh, technology, wearable technology such as uh, this device that I have here which is partly physical and partly electrical and partly radionic and uses a crystal and a coil to tune into various frequencies such as Schumann resonance frequency and other frequencies that are thought to be beneficial for, uh, for, for us humans and to help combat frequencies that are detrimental and might cause diseases. So this is a kind of is wearable art uh, incorporating technology. So, uh, so this is like a timepiece that I developed uh, myself. This is called a monstrance or reliquary and inside this chamber, the photo, what I call the photon chamber, I put a, a sacred geometry in a crystal and uh, f flickering lights that flicker at different frequencies. And the frequencies are driven by a frequency generator in the base including the battery so it's totally self-contained so this is like the next level beyond what the Christian church has had for a couple of thousand years to um, radiate a field of protection and to amplify prayer neither John nor myself are steampunk purists we gravitate between both camps so to speak between the reenactors camp of, of much more authentic Victoriana and Edwardiana and also uh, can steer ourselves in a more steampunk direction with the do-it-yourself innovativeness and uniqueness, the artistic creativity that uh, is part and parcel of steampunk. So we are not purists one way or the other. We do enjoy both and uh, we do get a little bit um, disenchanted with those who are either in one camp or the other and who treat people accordingly. They, there is a degree of uh, snobism as it were, uh, we've tended to observe in, in both camps of the reenactors and the steampunks. And it's difficult for the two camps to meet and, and marry, so to speak. And we're trying to bridge that gap. And that is reflected in the events that we hold and encourage our members to attend.